Welcome everyone to my presentation on utility scale renewables in Southwest Minnesota. My name is Jason Walker. I am the Community Development Director at the Southwest Regional Development Commission. And I've also had the privilege of working with the Clean Energy Resource Teams as one of their core partners for the last five years. And I'm also the staff member for the Rural Minnesota Energy Board. And they are a critical partner in working on utility scale renewables down in Southwest Minnesota. They have, were originally part of the large development of wind energy, but now we are seeing some development in the large scale solar and storage as well. And you can see here, they are a joint powers organization that has 18 members. And I zoomed in here so you can really see who they represent. Now, I live down here and it is a windy place. I talk to my wife on a regular basis and I say, you know, if it weren't for the wind, on a, it would be a wonderful day about 300 times a year. And as you can see on the map here, uh, that purple is the best wind in the state. And then it fades over into that darker orange, then the light orange and the brown. You can see exactly where a wind developer would want to go off of this map. And no big surprise, to the left is the heat map of where all of the wind towers and turbines are located in Minnesota. So almost all of them are in that southwest region, which matches up perfectly with the Buffalo Ridge, where all of that purple is on the map to the right. And then you can see a handful that are also to the east, and those are also rural Minnesota Energy Board members. Now, as the state has big goals to increase renewable energy and get rid of fossil fuels and have a cleaner economy, there is going to be demand in other areas of Minnesota. I would especially look at where it's dark orange. I would say this is going to be the next wave of projects. And I've already had requests from counties in those areas about how to handle it when developers are coming in and what do we do about our ordinances and what should we be looking at? And do I need a lawyer? Those kinds of questions, uh, which they've been working on for over 20 years in the Southwest, but now it's becoming, going to become more important for those folks that are located in that orange. As you can see, here's a graph that shows just how much of the wind energy is located in the southwest part of Minnesota. Of all of them in the entire state, 92% or almost 2,500 of the turbines are located down in my neck of the woods. Now, some of you might have the big clean energy goals, but to be honest, it's economic impact. That is the reason that most people have developed wind uh, projects down here from the developers to the landowners to the people who work on the projects to the folks who work at convenience stores and restaurants and hotels that uh, serve the people who are building these projects that is the primary driver and the counties and townships also receive a great deal of money for production taxes they get one dollar twenty cents off of every megawatt produced that is how it's taxed I'm going to use an example on Nobles County that is where Worthington is. So way back in 2003 is the first time they got production tax money. And you can see it was a whopping $959. But over the years, it gets larger and larger until you can see this cumulative effect of almost $15 million in production taxes since 2003. And now if you look at the 2022 number, that's almost $2 million. So they are hovering around $2 million a year in production taxes, and that will continue to increase over time. Also, if you are someone that owns the land for one turbine, these are fairly large, they're usually two and a half to three and a half megawatt powers, and some of them are even going up to five megawatt plus, you can get a wind lease and they've been averaging 5,000 to 15,000. It depends on the size of the tower. 
but as they get bigger, that amount that you would get paid for that lease for, the, for that tower would also get larger. Now, my focus today isn't so much on solar, but that is the next big wave, and there are projects now being developed in the region that are on that 150 to 200 megawatt scale that are already approved and permitted and getting ready to be built or in process. So if you're a landowner and you have uh, land that's really close to a substation that has capacity, then the developers come in, they are offering about $1,000 to $1,500 per acre. So if you needed had 100 acres and they needed it, well, you're looking at over 100,000, 100,000 to 150,000 a year in payments for the next 20 to 30 years, and they map that to inflation. So they usually give you a two or 3% increase on that amount every year over the life of the project. So that is a huge amount of money if you are a landowner, uh, and really, whether it's wind or solar, it's another crop that you are harvesting and putting to market. And sometimes getting it into market has become an issue, which we'll address in a second. Let me give you a jobs example. So the Nobles 2 project that was in Worthington, that was in Nobles County where Worthington is located. And that was a 250 megawatt project built a few years ago. And during construction, there were over 150 local construction workers that were employed. And then once it was done, it was 14 full-time jobs. And you can imagine when all those workers are here working on these projects, those hotels in the region are full. They are going to the restaurants, they're going to convenience stores, they are living and working and playing in the neighborhood. And it really has a big boost to the local economy. Now, what's happened more recently, especially back in 2020, 2021, is projects starting getting curtailed way more. Think of the transmission system like our highway system. There are now big traffic jams on this system. There are intersections that are almost impossible for drivers to get on. Only in this case, it's the transmission. It is so congested down here, it's often they are having to shut down wind turbines so that there's not too much energy going onto the system that would then cause uh, systems to break. So instead they have to put the brakes on and that created some big economic issues uh, a couple of years ago and continues to be a major challenge. For example, if you look at these numbers between 2020 and 2021 in Murray County and Nobles County, you can see certain townships that were getting over 50% less in tax production revenue due to, to cur curtailment. And it's completely linked to how much energy they're producing and selling onto the market. Now you can imagine this created a huge crisis. And then we started having summits, bringing in the Public Utilities Commission, and MISO representatives, that's the system that we're in, and county commissioners and anyone who else who had a huge stake in this issue to try and address what do we do about curtailment? Because that is a huge hit both to the developers and to the people purchasing the energy and also to those who are getting production taxes and leases off of that land. So the solution, or at least in part, is that new transmission is needed. Now, MISO, they are, again, it's the big system that manages the market and manages all the transmission in this Midwest portion down all the way to the Gulf Coast. They have approved this first wave of projects called Tranche 1, uh, but that's just approval. They are not built yet, but they are now in the process of getting this done. And it takes a long time. It takes many years to get these done, even when they get approval. So at best, we're looking at 2028 to 2030 to see some of these projects that are on those red lines actually in play. And here you can see where some of those are planned to be here in Minnesota. Now, a key thing to know is just because a line is hundreds of miles away does not mean it won't help alleviate congestion down in southwest Minnesota. 
it is a great big system that's all connected. So if you are uh, solving bottlenecks somewhere else, that allows it to get where it needs to go so then more can go on to the system. So even projects that look like they're far away, they can help with the problem. And then now here's the proposed second wave, tranche two projects. And when we get going on those, uh, that would unleash even more projects. And I really want to highlight these yellow areas right here. If I get my clicker, if you look at these, now there's another system over here that's nice, not MISO. See this light gray? That's the Southwest Power Pool. And if we can make those systems talk to each other, then these three projects right here, or there's another one further south, that would unleash potentially up to 30 gigawatts worth of renewable energy projects, projects that developers would go after. And then Excel is working on closing down their Sherco coal plant up in this uh, southeast of St. Cloud. And what you see here, there are two proposed routes that they're trying to work on and get permitted. And assuming that goes through, then they will come all the way down into the southwest. This is Lyon County, Marshall area. And I think this is Garvin. So Garvin's kind of at the epicenter of all of this. And I just had the privilege of touring the Brookings line. I was able to actually go out with some rural Minnesota Energy Board members and others and see them working on these substations, working on these lines, and even had a guy dangling from a helicopter and working on stringing up a second line on this large Brookings line that's going from South Dakota into Lyon County, and then it's gonna go further east. What I'm trying to illustrate here is you now have Lyon County and Marshall and Garvin and this whole area uh, truly at a critical connection here where they have some renewables, but not a lot. And now you are looking at many hundreds of megawatts of proposed projects that are be coming down the pipeline. So in conclusion, there is a massive demand for additional renewable energy on the grid. And it started with wind, but now solar is a major player. Uh, there are at least 250 megawatt projects that are uh, approved by the PUC already in our area, and there are many more in the pipeline. And wind will continue to be a player as well. And so those, the combination of the two plus storage is going to be one of the biggest economic drivers for the communities in Southwest Minnesota, but I project that it will now start to expand beyond that to those other areas of the state. And we hope to continue to research this and be on the front lines so we can assist others that this may be new to you and we wanna help. Uh, this is gonna to continue to be a big need. The state is going to be pushing for the 2040 goals on lowering emissions and being net zero. And I hope that this helps you understand how it's been working in Southwest Minnesota before and how we are thinking about moving forward in the future. Thank you very much for your time.